Welcome back to Campus Countdown. I'm your host, Emily Sturge, and today we'll be covering a Pell Grant proposal that would fund skills training, closing workforce gaps, a student government senator fights back against an unconstitutional pronoun mandate, and a student-led Christian revival on campus is attracting thousands. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, a new bill being considered by the House of Representatives would extend Pell Grants to workers looking to gain skills in high-demand fields. If passed, the bill would make federal Pell Grants available for certain short-term workforce programs. According to a Department of Education website, federal Pell Grants usually are awarded only to undergraduate students who display exceptional financial need and have not earned a bachelor's graduate or professional degree. With more than 11 million unfilled jobs in the United States and more than 6 million Americans unemployed, Republican lawmakers pointed out the importance of addressing the skills gap. Representative Virginia Fox called for bipartisan support for the bill and said that workforce training programs should be prioritized. In a recent poll, 72 percent of young adults who have university degrees say that college did not fully prepare them to start a career. If passed, the Pell Grant will cover the cost of training programs in areas, such, in areas such as manufacturing, construction, transportation, welding, medical assistance, technician, or computer coding and data analytics. These training programs would prepare young adults for meaningful careers and help close the workforce gap. In our second story this week, a student government senator fights back against an unconstitutional pronoun mandate. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Lena Branch. The University of Houston's SGA recently proposed a Respect for Pronouns bill that would require its members to refer to others by their respective pronouns and respect people's gender identity. The bill would have required SGA members to refer to one another by preferred pronouns, that SGA members wear name tags with preferred pronouns, and strongly recommends that members also display pronouns during Zoom meetings. However, student Senator Mike Abel is opposed to the bill, claiming that it constitutes a violation of the First Amendment, and the SGA Supreme Court agreed. Abel, who is a member of the UH Law Center, told campus reform that the bill in question, if enacted, would compel speech. Abel said, I think that compelled speech at public universities isn't proper or constitutional, regardless of what the agenda being pushed is. As we've reported at campus reform, pronoun mandates gaining a foothold in higher education is not new. Back in the fall 2022 semester, campus reform reported that the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth launched a pronoun database allowing students to submit their chosen name, pronouns, gender identity, and sexual orientation. The University of New Mexico took it a step further and required its members to comply with each other's preferred pronouns. We are continuing to see this trend in higher education with stories like this at the University of Houston. Back to you, Emily. In our top story this week, a student-led revival on Asbury University's campus in Kentucky lasted a remarkable two weeks. The event attracted thousands of worshipers from across the globe and even sparked similar events at other universities. The revival began after a school chapel service on February 8th that University President Kevin Brown described as ordinary and unremarkable to NBC. But the performance of a student-led worship choir following the service sparked a call for praise, which continued for two weeks. After going viral on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, as many as 5,000 worshipers of all ages from across the country flocked to the small town of Wilmore, Kentucky, which is a town of less than 7,000 people. Since the institution was founded in 1890, Asbury has had eight revivals on its campus, the most recent before this year's being in 2006, where a chapel service lasted for four continuous days. Students finding home at the revival follows a trend that we've reported here at the Leadership Institute's campus reform of students fleeing woke universities to receive education from Christian liberal arts institutions. We've reported on an increase in enrollment at faith-based colleges and universities due to the classical education they offer. 
Now it's time for the Woke Tweet of the Week. This week's tweet comes from Fox News. The tweet reads, Woke California University slammed for dehumanized initiative encouraging students to tell on professors. Recently, three campus reform correspondents, including myself, were invited to be interviewed by Fox News about a story we reported here at Campus Reform. Correspondents Daryl Boyer, Courtney McLean, and I discussed California State University, Monterey Bay, encouraging students to tell on professors for racism if they aren't called on. In our segment, we discussed this story in California and also provided a testament to our own experiences as conservatives on college campuses here in Florida. Our appearance on Fox garnered national attention, making headlines and bringing awareness to the national issue of liberal bias on college campuses. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.